God's going to lead you to truth and righteousness. Then I came, came here. My wife, said, my, wife, my wife said unto me, she says, if you want to hang out with me, you got to be saved, big boy. So I'm going to bring you to church. She brought me to church. I got hooked on Jesus. I can't tell you the rest. That's how you win a soul. Amen. Young people take notes. Hallelujah. Now we're going to bring one of our, our young people chairman up here. She's here. She's breathing. She's breathing hard because she knows she got to come here and give the word. It ain't easy. So I know that feeling. So let's receive her with one warm welcome. Remember by saying, preach the word. Preach the word. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. He is awesome. And if I could just leave my quick testimony. Um, it was crazy at work today. It was kind of like our typical Monday, but being Tuesday. And um, I just could not wait to get off of work so I could just turn on my Pandora and just get in my zone. So as soon as I got in my car, I turned on my Pandora, and they were just playing the songs back to back. Uh, Marvin said, he saw the best of me when everybody else saw the worst of me. It was then the back to back. My God is awesome. I just got in there. I I literally almost put over the car and began to just, just worship God. I was just driving and worshiping because God is just awesome. I love him. When I said that before, I said God is the best thing that's ever happened. I mean, he is the best thing that has ever happened to me, to Sister Ashley. Amen. But God is awesome. I want to give God honor for allowing me to stand before you, Pastor Johnson, for allowing me to, to, to be before you. And the, the text I got, hey, can you be up? That's when my heart started pounding. It <laughs> started pounding. And I kind of started sweating. But amen. God is good anyway. Amen. amen. Well, today's message, the title is entitled Moving Forward. And if I would give a subtitle, subtitle I would say, No More. This is the last time. Amen. amen. I gave you guys like a cheat sheet of scriptures. I like doing that because I like to take notes and. So um, turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 23 through 24. I'm going to grab my water. And I'm going to read for your hearing. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 23 through 24 states, But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice. And I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Somebody say backward? backward. Not, forward. not forward. Going down to another verse, that would be First John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. And I'll read it for your hearing. <clears throat> love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Last verse I want to read for your hearing, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 27 through 28. This is a good verse right here. Makes me think. And that reads, Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? Amen? Amen. Moving forward is a continual process that produces action or motion to be toward a position in front. In order to move forward, sometimes we have to leave things behind us. <clears throat> in the scripture Jeremiah, the scripture was read, some crazy things were happening. After King Josiah's death, his son Jehoiakim was king. Second Chronicles 36 and 5 states, Jehoiakim Kim was 25, 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of, his, of the Lord his God. And after Josiah's death, the nation relapsed into idolatry worship through Jehoiakim's bad influence. 
The people were worshiping idol, idols and then trying to worship God. Do you know anybody who has been in that spot where they've been doing contrary to the Bible, but yet then they want to bless God? You guys know anybody that wants to do that? All right. So I was in a situation where people try to manipulate you because you're saved. Uh, an individual, a family member of mine, um, he was in a tough position, and he wanted to try to guilt me into giving him some money to help him out through this position. And I wouldn't give the person this money, and they try to say, oh, you're saved. What's that got to do with it? <laughs> they, try to, they try to manipulate you into getting what you want. But in the sense, how can you tell me to be saved and you're not living holy? All right. So in Jeremiah 20, uh, 7, 24 says, But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. That is so deep. Think about when people are in jail. Isn't that the time when they want to love God? They want to know who God is? Oh, God, if you get me out of here, I promise I'm going to be good. I'm going to do what you want. Don't even see them. Do you see them come to church? No, 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 no. But they're seeking God strong in jail. We can all look around and even experience it ourselves when we try to move forward that sometimes we move backwards. So think about this. You, you've been paying on your car for five years. You've been paying faithfully, faithfully, faithfully. After The day after you pay it off, then the engine blows up. When you're trying to move forward. Doesn't the same, the same when it rains, it pours? When you try to get ahead, something is always getting in the way of your progress. So how can I move forward? Uh, when do I catch my break? My question for you is not how can you move forward when you're holding on to something or someone else. Amen. All right. In 1 John 2 and 15 and 17, the scripture said again, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The scripture is pretty clear in the instruction, love not the world, neither the things in the world. Moving on down, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. These little three things are tough little cookies, aren't they? They deal with our five senses, our touching, our tasting, our smelling, our hearing, our seeing. The lust of the flesh is a big one because it deals with four out of the five senses. It deals with the tasting, touching, smelling, and hearing. All right, let me give you some examples of the lust of the flesh on the tasting part of it. What about drinking that ignorant oil? As my husband says, that alcohol. All right, touching. An example of lust of the flesh of touching, touching another person that you shouldn't be touching leads to fornication. Smelling, you know, being around that marijuana, trying to get that contact high, or some on that cigarettes, like, well, it'll smoke my way. Hearing, listening to the vulgar music and filthy cursing. Those are just examples of the lust of the flesh. Now, the examples of the lust of the eyes are just that, lust of the eyes. It deals with our scene, looking at porno, Looking at somebody you know you shouldn't be looking at? The example of the pride of life is, I, that was a hard one for me to ever understand that when I first got to say this, the pride of life, what does that mean? But the pride of life is thinking you're special because of who you are, what you have, what you know, or what you look like. Pride. The enemy uses these three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life to entice us to sin. He makes it look appealing, doesn't it? He makes that beer commercial look so good with the little dew drops on there. He makes that girl in that bikini just look all good. Like, what? He makes it enticing. <laughs> he makes it so, he makes it look so good. Just think about that car, that, that little Mercedes. That looks so good. It makes it enticing, pleasing to our eyesight. I'm talking about me because I like Mustang, so. Amen. Now, think about the saying, this is the last time. Have you ever said that? Oh, this is the last time. Before I, was the Holy, before I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I remember God was dealing with me. I said, ah, oh. was drinking my little alcohol. I said, this is the last time I'm going to get hungover. I said, this is the last time. 
And I said, oh, this is the last time I'm going to stay over at Dale's house. <laughs> this is the last time. Man, I could tell you, this, this is the last time I'm going to smoke this weed. This is the last time, right? Sometimes we say this is our last time, but do we really mean it? I'm just thinking about just the, the most recent example that I can use about me saying this is the last time. Last year, we, um, the married couples, we went on a retreat. We went up north, and uh, they're laughing because they were there. We went up north, and uh, we tried to do something adventurous. Let's say, let's go canoeing. And, like, none of us went canoeing before. And so, long story short... I'm paddling. I got dunked over like three times. I almost drowned. And when I got off, I lost my flip-flops. I had to walk uh, like a mile. It wasn't a mile. It could have been a mile. Back to the house barefoot. And I remember thinking, this is my last time canoeing. And now the retreat is coming up next month, and I think I might do it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Do we really mean it? When it comes to saying this is the last time of doing something that's not holy, consider the scripture um, in Proverbs 6, 27 and 28. So, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? I'm sure we all have heard the saying, if you play with fire, you're going to get burned. You heard that? Raise your hand. You heard it? I've been making this a practice the last few years. I don't know if it's because I didn't got older or what, natural or spiritually. I asked myself, um, if by doing this, is this going to make me get closer to my goal or further away from it? And now my number one goal is to make it to heaven. So I consider different situations and I say, is this going to make me get to heaven or is it make me going to push away? And then I'll act accordingly. But, you know, try it. It really works. And it makes you reconsider a lot of your decisions. In that also, in doing my lifestyle change, I think about this, like, we're, we've been doing this biggest loser about, you know, losing weight and all that. I think about, like, I love chocolate cupcakes with vanilla frosting. I love this. But I ask myself, if I eat this cupcake, is this going to make me uh, reach my goal or is this going to make me get further away from it? And it's going to make me get further away from it. And I say, it's not even worth it. When you think about a lot of stuff, it's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. In order to progress and move forward, we have to keep on moving. Somebody say, keep moving? keep moving? Yes, you might have messed up, but keep on moving. You know, if you repent, if you messed up, repent, confess, forsake. Repent, confess, forsake. Repent, confess, forsake. Com repent, confess, forsake. You cannot move forward if you're not going to let anything go that you're holding on to. Now, when you let go of something, it's like a weight is off your shoulders. You didn't even know, you didn't even know how burdened down you were until you just let it go and then you feel so much lighter. You got, you can walk up taller and just walk because you don't have to worry about that garbage. <clears throat> Amen. And you know, when I first got saved, I didn't realize it was a learning process. And you know, I'm glad I, did, I gave God a chance. A lot of people that get saved, they don't give God a chance. But I'm telling you guys, do not give up. Keep on moving forward. There's progress. Keep on moving forward. Keep your eyes on the prize. Amen. That prize is making it to heaven. Keep on holding on. Amen. You've got to get to that point to say, no more. I want to let it go. Amen. And just an, a little encouragement, too, try to be around people that don't bring up your past in your face. Because, you know, we've all done some stuff we're not proud of, and that's kind of embarrassing. It's kind of, it makes us feel a certain way. But to be constantly be brought up in your face, stay away from those people. I try to, t I try to stay around positive people, like people that are going to encourage me, people that are going to make me better, like people that are going to just like, come on, Ashley, you can make it. I love that. Amen. Now, my last encouragement to you to stay positive and keep on moving forward, in 1 Corinthians 9 and 24, says, know, you, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Live this sanctified life like today is your last day alive. Amen? you got to walk in holiness. Run this race so you can get that prize of eternal salvation. Because everybody knows we are in the last day. We are in that last, evil, wicked, look around us, look around us. Um, in 1 John 2 and 18, it says, Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Let us know that we need to get it together if we want to make it. Amen?
Amen. God bless you. Amen. If we all please stand.